All right, let's get you caught up. If you haven't figured it out by now, this party isn't a great one. It started with Dr. J. Jameson being strangled in May Day's office. Then Mrs. Terry Bull, wife of the mayor, ended up dead at the bottom of the servant's stairs. Although, I don't know if we're counting that as murder or not yet. The telephone line was cut with Millie Graham and Robin Hyde looking to see if they could fix it. And while they are outside, Lou Scannon, Noah Goodman, and Skip Dover are investigating the tree that came down on the lane. At least, they were before something came their way. So who will get knocked off or out next? What is taking them so long? The storm's pretty bad out there. What if something's happened to them? I'm sure they're fine. Young men like that are strong. Well, your pansy of a boy might not be. Hey, Skip is the best fella out there. Sure he is, old girl. I think I'm going to go see what's taking them so long and check on Robin and Millie. I'll go with you. Hate to say it, but I don't think it'll go well with you in those heels you're wearing. I've got to change your shoes downstairs. Let me get my coat. Are you sure you should be going out in this storm? I've got to make sure Lou is okay. Don't worry. We'll make sure that your husband comes home, too. Well, thank you. I- I'd go myself, Don't but... even think about it. This isn't something that a lady in your condition should be doing. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Ready, Mr. O'Shea? Got your hair covered and everything. I don't want you squealing that your hair got wet. That I do. Once we check on the boys, we can stop and see your girl, too. Best to not go out alone. Mm, pretty and smart. Flattery will get you everywhere with me, Mr. O'Shea. Come on, vamos. The two venture out together in the storm. Well, at least the wind has lessened a bit. I'm actually surprised you volunteered to come out here. Vera would never do that. Vera probably didn't grow up on the wrong side of the tracks like I did. If she did, she wouldn't go back. I care a whole lot more about my people than material items. Hills, they can be replaced. Family, can't be. Skip is all I really have. So you two... Are as thick as thieves. Have been since we found each other. Right. Sounds like me and Lou. You've been working for him long? We met when we were both just underlings for the Banks family. You ever hear of them? Yeah, that gang that May took out years ago? Aye. We both worked for them as kids. I was 20 when they got killed, and Lou was just 18. But he saw an opening and filled it. It's taken us quite a while to get on Day's level, but we're a threat to her and she knows it. That's why there are all those bats between you and Day, between Day and Lou? Aye. Blood between both of us. Losing your gang... It's like losing your family. Like a singer losing their band. Exactly. Well, that explains why you seemed so uncomfortable. Well, I feel like we're in the lion's den, with no protection. Then let's find our boys and head back. Do you see them? Well, I th- think I see the tree up ahead. Skip? Noah? Scannon? Oh. Skip, oh God, what happened? Uh, I don't know. Uh, my head... I feel like I hit the broad side of a barn. What were you doing? Just trying to get a look over the tree. I must have fallen while climbing up. Then what happened to Scannon and Goodman? They both went towards the end of the tree to see if we could get around it. You two all right? I'm going to go see if I can find them. I should go. Oh, Oh no, you don't. You're going to sit here until you're not swaying on your feet. Just holler if you need anything. Our hero, at least for now, walks along the tree, searching until he finds Noah face down in the grass. This certainly isn't looking good. Goodman, are you okay? (laughs) Jesus, Mary, and Joseph! Goodman, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Give me a second. I don't see any blood. What happened? I feel like I got punched in the gut. Yeah, something smacked me all right. (laughs) Knocked the air out of me. Must have taken me down. You think you can stand? Yeah. Give me a hand up. It's not too bad now that I'm upright. What are you doing out here? You guys didn't come back, so Belle and I went looking for you. She's with Skip right now. Is everyone else okay? We thought Skip just fell, and he was climbing up the tree and slipped. But with you... Uh, Yeah, I didn't fall. Noah, what the hell happened to you? I'm okay. Damn. Come over and sit here on this branch. Scan and come back? Not yet. Okay. Well, let me go down and look for him. I'll go with you, so you don't have to go alone. No, I'll go. No. You two will sit here until we get back. Give you some time to get your feet back under you. I wouldn't argue with her if I were you. You won't win. (laughs) I think you're right. (laughs) All right, Miss Tone. 
we'll sit right here like good boys. Good. Come on, O'Shea. Let's find your boss and get all of us out of the rain. Yeah, I don't like this. I want to make sure Robin is okay. I'm sure she is. She and Millie were together, and right near the house. If anything happened, someone would have heard. You're right. And I know that she can handle herself. Wait, what's that? Ahead is a figure, staggering a bit as if drunk. Scannon? O'Shea? What the hell happened to you? Oh, I don't know. I, I was walking along here looking for a way around the tree. Then I woke up with my face in the mud. Some piker snuck up on me. Someone went after all three of them. All three of us? Found Dover and Goodman in similar positions. Damn. Let's get you three back to the house and dry it off. I want to say no to a hot drink. Can do. Can you walk? Yeah, I, th I think so. Here, lean on me, just to make sure you stay on your feet. Our little ragtag crew joins back together again, helping each other along. Belle and Lou grip onto one another while Noah lets Skip, still unsteady on his feet, lean on him. Rick keeps his hand at his side, eyes continuously scanning the area before he glances down, bending down for a closer look. I wonder what's in the mud. I, I can't quite see around him. You okay, Rick? Yeah, sorry. I just thought I saw something. Might have been a truck of the light. Yeah? Yeah, just some broken glass. It might be a bottle day ships her booze out in. He straightens and continues, hands still resting close to his hip as the group continues on back to the house. I wonder what he's got under there. <gasps> Hello, Eakins! What happened? Damn it, why is she always the first one to notice things? Oh my gosh! You soaked! And your face! Oh, it's not that bad. I'm just mostly covered in mud. Did the girls come back yet? Right here. Standing in the front hall is Robin, soaked to the skin with mud down her skirt and her hair a mess. Lass, what happened to you? I'm not sure. Someone snuck up on Millie and I, smacking us both across the back of the head. It didn't knock us out, but it certainly had us down for a bit. What happened to you all? Jesus, Mary and Joseph! Are you all right? Yes, yes. We're both all right, just wet and muddy. Well, now explains why you look like us. Right. So now answer my question. What happened? Rick? Same thing. All three of us got attacked. But thankfully, we're all still alive. Oh, thank God. I don't know what I'd do without you, Louis King. Well, careful, Vera. I wouldn't want you to get mud all over your pretty dress. Oh, so very true. <laughs> Did any of you see what happened? No, I honestly thought I just fell. A branch broke from under me, but for all I know, it could have been someone swiping at my feet to knock me off. I didn't look to see if there were any broken branches. Neither did I. Someone snuck up and knocked the air out of me. I don't know how long I was laying there before I was able to get air back into my lungs. What about you, Lou? Got snuck up on. I figure I must not have hurt him over the storm. Did any of you see anything? I was looking at something before I got knocked out, but I don't remember what it was. Hopefully it'll come back to me. I didn't see anything. Goodman? Well, I, I saw a light in the woods, but I thought it was one of you two. Uh, I didn't pay much attention since we all had lights out there. I think it could have been our killer. Aww. Vera, it's okay. We're all fine. Oh, but you could have been killed. Like I said, it's a whole lot harder to kill me than knock me on the head. But, whoa, what happened to you all? We were attacked out by the tree. Where's Millie? She's downstairs. She's finding me some dry clothes. Oh, I think you could all use them. Come on, upstairs with you all. Give me a moment. I'm going to check on Mary first. I'll just leave my shoes here so I don't track mud all through the house. Perfectly fine. She's right in the front room. Thank you, Miss Sunny. I'm going to follow Noah because I can already hear Vera tutting over Lou and I would rather keep my lunch down. Besides, Noah and Mary, they're a cute couple. At least when you get to know them and Mary isn't off lying down in her delicate condition. You know, she kind of just feels like a place filler. Maybe we'll have to fix that. Mary! Noah! What happened to you? Damn it, I forgot she was going to be here, too. Please say Mayor Bull isn't here, too. Son, you look like you're covered in horse shit. Lovely. Just mud. We had a bit of an altercation out there outside. Are you okay? Yes, darling. We all are. Just sore and soaked to the bone. I wanted to check on you first before going upstairs to dry off. Are you okay? I was so worried about you. You're not hurt. Promise. And you? You didn't answer me. Well, 
I'm as well as can be expected. Well, I am not. Some psychopath just tried to kill my brother. No one tried to kill me. They just knocked the wind out of me. Like you used to do when we were kids. I did no such thing. You gotta look at the man. What makes you think it's a man? Let's be honest, old girl. I'd guess it was a woman if people were getting poisoned. But attacks like these, strangled and beaten, possibly pushed down the stairs, that's something you need strength for. I suppose so. Although I knew some strong girls growing up. <laughs> Those aren't like the ladies we have here tonight, am I right? So, this really is a killer. We can't just hope that it's one and done. Oh. Well, I, for one, won't stand for this. I want to get out of here and go home where there are no murders. I hate to tell you this, Nita, but we're stuck here. No way we're getting out of here with that tree down. No way we're getting around that tree until we've got some light and the storm lets up. What? So we're just expected to stay here until morning? That's practically 20 hours away. I don't think I could sleep here if I wanted to. I don't think you should want to sleep. Makes you a sitting duck. I don't think we have any reason to be concerned. That's what all the guilty ones say. Are you insinuating something, Mayor Bowl? Only that I know your family just lucked into our social standing. Who knows how your people settle disputes? My family worked hard to get where we are. And at least we tell people when we don't like them instead of pretending to be someone's friend and hiding behind fake smiles like politicians. But no one of my class would ever dare to raise a finger against someone else. Sure you wouldn't. You'd just do it in the shadows and destroy lives instead of hurting them out in the open. Is that how you sleep at night? You might have destroyed a person for your own gain, but at least you didn't kill them yourself? Noah! <sighs> then it's not your fault? They just couldn't handle the pressure of living a life of leisure? Is that it? Because God forbid we all be good people? Who cares about the person who's clawed their way out of poverty when they get torn down? Just proves that they should have learned to stay in their place. Isn't that right, Mayor? What the devil's going on in here? At least we are honest with ourselves and others when we say we dislike them. Noah, please, I... I... <sighs> oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Let my temper get the best of me. Noah. I'm sorry. Are you okay? She's got you wrapped around her little finger, doesn't she, son? Unlike you, I care about my wife and want to see her happy. Including when I'm being a brainless nitwit. Leave us alone. Mayor, why don't we all give everyone some space? Yes, I think that would be wise. Hate to hurt anyone else's fragile sensibilities. <sighs> Noah, please, not now. I'm sorry. He gets under my skin so easily. I know you don't like raised voices. I, I know he does. Let's just not think about him right now. You're right, and that's all that matters to me. Yes, we're all fine. You should go lay down for a bit. Relax after everything while I go change. Ugh, that would be nice. Let me ask if there's a room you can lay down in. Here, help me up and I'll go with you. The young couple starts up the front stairs, Noah carefully steadying his wife. At the top is Sunny overseeing everything. Is there any chance there's a room where my wife could lay down for a bit? Oh, of course. Are you unwell, Mrs. Goodman? Uh, just a bit tired. Nothing that some time to relax won't fit. This attack has really rattled my nerves. Well, I understand completely. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly what rooms are occupied oh, right I'm now. Oh, I'm done with this room. Thank you for the fresh clothes. Of course. I would hate for anyone to catch a chill. Right this way, Mrs. Goodman. You can use my bedroom. I don't think I'll be getting any sleep tonight anyway. Thank you, Miss Day. You just holler if you need anything at all, darling. I'll be right there. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll just take a moment and I'll be down again soon. Take all the time you need. What would you like me to do with the wet clothes? In this basket. Millie said she'd take them down to soak. But Louie can! Give me a moment, woman. Well, I never... Ugh. You don't like her that much. Let's put it this way. 
none of the gang does. But what can we do? Lou knows how we feel about her. And he doesn't care? He says it's part of a master plan, but won't tell us anything else. I see. But what can we do? I suppose if you love someone, you love them. And Lou's family. So we'll put up with his questionable taste in women. I think most men have a few questionable partners. <laughs> that they do, miss. Thank you for the fresh clothes. I'm going to go down and get a nip to drink. Try and warm up? Oh, yes, please do. <coughs> oh, Mr. Goodman, I'm so sorry. You need a change, don't you? At least getting out of these wet clothes would be nice. Hmm. Let's see what rooms are open. Sonny moves down the hall, knocking on doors. Is that you, Robin? Sorry, no, just trying to find an empty room. Vera, I said stop. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Vera again. No, just looking for an empty room for Mr. Goodman. Yes? Oh, Miss Day. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking for an empty room for Mr. Goodman. Excuse me. Oh, you can use this one. I'm done here. Let me just grab my shoes and I'll be out in two ticks. Well, that was lucky. Thank you, Miss Tone. Of course. My daddy's always said to share and be generous. I'm done and I already cranked up the radiator so it's nice and warm. We're looking for some clothes for you gentlemen right now, Mr. Goodman. Don't worry about Skip. We always come with a change of clothes so we don't have to travel um, in our performing outfits. Thank you. I'll tell Millie. Feel free to warm up and clean up, Mr. Goodman, until we find some clothes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Isn't it so nice when people come together like this? Uh, miss, can I take your wet clothes? Oh, thank you, Millie. I think Collins has brought up some fresh drinks and something hot for everyone downstairs. Thank you. I appreciate all your hospitality during all of this. Miss Day, Millie, I'm sure this can't be easy. We do what we can. Right, Millie? <laughs> yes, miss. Well, it's appreciated. Now, I'm going to take you up on that offer for something warm to drink. Millie, are you all right? Robin said you were hit too. I was, but I'm all right, miss. You're sure? Yes, miss. A bit of a headache, but I'll be fine. Were your shoes ruined? Huh? Oh, yes. They were covered in mud from the gardens. I left them in the kitchen, and I hope you don't mind me being in my stockings. <laughs> Not at all. I'll try to keep Grandmother off of you about it. Thank you, miss. Oh, this hasn't turned out as I expected. Miss? What do you think? Me, miss? Oh, don't pretend you don't know, Millie. Maids see everything. This whole thing is just... odd. I'd have to agree with you, miss. Not many dinner parties turn into murder parties. <laughs> At least not usually like this. I just wish I knew what was going on. <sighs> Well, would now be a good time to mention that a reporter had called a few days ago, wanting to know who was invited and who was coming. Why didn't you say anything? Well, because I handled it. I know how much you and your grandmother like your privacy, so I told them it was a private party and not to be covered in society pages. And then I hung up on them. You know, grandmother doesn't give you enough credit. Thank you, Millie, for protecting us and for telling me about it now. It wouldn't have been anything to worry about before, but now it does have me wondering who might have a vendetta against us. I'm not sure, miss, but I think it would be foolish if you didn't watch your back. You never know who might be up to something. <laughs> and what mystery isn't complete without suddenly turning off the lights on everyone? Maybe we'll get into some mischief. You've been listening to Simply to Die For by Roving Rogue Productions. This podcast was created thanks to a grant from Arts and Stark, the County Arts Council, and recorded in Maslin, Ohio. Simply to Die For was written by C.J. Coral and directed by Chuck Bonikowski. Audio engineering by Nicholas Nano. Be sure to follow and subscribe to Simply to Die For on all your favorite podcast platforms. Follow Roving Rogue Productions on social media at Roving Rogue Pro for updates on the show and other Rogues projects. For all other virtual and in-person events, transcripts, and how to support us, visit us at rovingrogespro.weebly.com. Thanks for listening.